Hi, and welcome to the screencast on How Tectonic Plates Move. Before we begin, please make sure that your notebook is set up in Cornell note fashion, that you have your lines drawn, you have today's date, and today's title. Let's review a little bit before we start. The last time we talked, we found out that Alfred Wagner was a German scientist who proposed the theory of continental drift. He believed that all of the continents were lined up from the North Pole to the South Pole in a huge supercontinent called Pangaea. He had evidence that these continents eventually drifted apart. Do you remember what these three pieces of evidence were? Say them to yourself right now. Now even though Wagner had this evidence, scientists did not believe him because he couldn't explain how the continents moved. Today we're going to learn about who figured out how the continents move and how it happens. The theory of tectonic plates. The theory states that the Earth's lithosphere is made up of huge plates that move over the surface of Earth. But how does this happen? Our story begins back in World War II. Harry Hess was a Navy captain of an assault transport, transport ship, but he was a geologist at heart. Traveling from battle to battle, Hess would take surveys of the ocean floor using sonar. Back in the 1940s, people believed that the ocean floor was flat, but Hess found out that the ocean floor was not flat at all, but had huge underwater mountain ranges. These mountain ranges are called mid-ocean ridges, and on the picture here you can see that there are two main ridges that go all the way around the world. The one on the left hand side is the East Pacific Rise and goes through the Pacific Ocean. The one on the right hand side is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and goes through the Atlantic Ocean. For the next 15 years, Hess continued to gather evidence about the ocean floor, how the underwater mountain ranges were formed, and how the ocean floor was different ages. In 1962, Hess published a paper called History of Ocean Basins, which explained how the seafloor spreading works and how the continents moved. Finally, Alfred Wagner's theory of continental drift made sense and was accepted thanks to Hess's explanation of how the continents moved. At the mid-ocean ridges, the seafloor spreading occurs. And what happens is, is that melted rock rises through the cracks along the crust, cools, and forms new ocean crust. So as you can see, the magma from the mantle goes up through a crack in the crust of the ocean. New, when that uh, uh, hot lava hits the cold ocean water, it cools off fairly quickly and then eventually over time that new crust is pushed uh, to the side so that other new crust can form. So the old crust is pushed away from the ridge which is called ridge push to make room for the new crust and is slowly spreading apart and these areas are known as spreading centers. So again, we have the hot magma coming from the mantle, coming up through the crack in the crust, cooling and becoming solid, um, and brand new crust. And then as more new crust forms, the old crust gets pushed to the side. Go ahead and take a moment to draw a picture of that. Pause me if you need to. Show me how 
the new crust forms and where it gets moved to. Here's another picture um, so that you can see kind of a different point of view. Uh, again, here's the magma coming up and we are under the ocean floor so when that comes up that hot magma gets cooled by the cold ocean water and then we can see the where the sea floor spreading occurs and how older crust is being pushed to the side um, as time goes on. One of the reasons that Hess was able to figure out that the sea floor was spreading out was because he took core samples of the ocean floor soil and analyzed their age. So a core sample is like taking a big uh, um, hollow drill, putting it, drilling it into the earth and pulling it out and when you um, open it up you've got this tube of soil and what they do is they analyze the soil to see how old it is. Now he found that the farther away from the mid-ocean ridge the crust was, the older the rock sample was. And he concluded that the older crust was being pushed away from the mid-ocean ridge as younger crust was formed. So again, as you can see, younger crust is here and the older crust is on the side. Go ahead and mark on your picture where the younger rock is and where the older rock is. All right, let's take a look at the Paleo Map Project. This is really interesting. It's a really great visual that shows um, how the age of the ocean floor is different um, as you go away from the mid-ocean ridge. Now there's different colors that you're going to see and if you read down below here while I'm doing this you can see that the youngest crust is red and the oldest crust is going to be a dark blue and they even have kind of a purplish in there um, which is more than 180 million years old. But watch what happens to the continent. So here we have Pangaea. Um, we have Africa right in here. Uh, this right here is South America. And this here is India. Now India is fun to watch because it's going to jam up here and then crash into Asia up there. So watch what happens when I start moving. Okay. So the green is showing you where, I'm sorry, the red in the middle, let me finish here. Okay, so the red in here is where the new crust is forming, and then the blue and the purple is where the old crust is forming. Okay, and did you see how South America and Africa separated? I'm going to go back and do this one more time so that you can pay attention if you weren't to here. We're going to learn later on that when uh, this particular plate that has India um, crashes into the Asian plate that that's where the Himalayas were formed. So go ahead and watch what happens as I move this. Okay, so it goes down and then watch how it goes up and crashes into, into that other continent there. Anyway, I thought it was interesting that they could kind of map out where the youngest crust was and where the older crust was. And then you could also see how these fit together like a puzzle like Wagner was saying. Now the one thing that was puzzling to Hess and the other scientists was the age of the ocean floor. So if the earth was actually 4.8 billion years old, which is what they believe, the ocean floor should be just as old, and yet they can only find evidence of the ocean floor being a few hundred million years old. 
And also, with all this new crust being formed, the Earth should be getting bigger. And yet, the Earth has stayed the same size. How is this possible? Well, the answer is ocean trenches. Ocean trenches are like deep canyons in the sea floor where the dense oceanic crust is sinking and being recycled into the asthenosphere. So remember that we have our two types of crust. We have oceanic crust and we have continental crust. Now oceanic crust is thinner but it's denser uh, than the continental crust. So it gets pushed underneath the continental crust when they meet. This is uh, an example of uh, a trench. It's called the Mariana Trench, and it is one of the deepest that we have. Was just kind of a fun little look at what the Mariana Trench looks like. Um, now what pulls the crust underneath uh, the continental crust? Well it's called subduction and subduction is the process of one plate being pulled under another. Slab pull occurs when gravity pulls the denser cooler oceanic plate into the asthenosphere at the subduction zone. So again, here we have the ocean trench, and as that is being pulled down, it's called subduction. And this entire area right here is called the subduction zone, where it's being pulled down. Now, when it gets further down here towards the mantle, that's when it's going to start melting. So the older crust is destroyed or recycled at the same rate the new crust is formed. And that's what keeps the earth the same size. So you have new crust forming at the mid-ocean ridges. The older crust is being pushed away from that ridge and then going down into the trenches and being melted and then becoming magma that will come up once again for the new crust. When you're finished taking your notes, go ahead and go back and write 15 questions on the left hand side of your Cornell notes that can be answered by the notes that you took. Please don't make up any questions that have nothing to do with your notes. Second, write a brief summary explaining the process of how new crust is formed and how old crust is recycled at the bottom of your notes. When you're finished, take a short quiz on these notes on the virtual classroom and you can find them under Tectonic Plates, Chapter 1.2, How Plates Move. <laughs>